Hi, thank you for joining in the real and to the point. I'm your host, Sharon Levette, the Surgeoner. Today's program is going to be about a new book that I'm working on, 180 Days of Sunshine. And it's going to be based on a kid's book that I wrote titled Devin's Destiny. And um, there's going to be a little twist and turn. But as um, I said, um, it's going to be personal for me. Um, It's also going to include... As you all know, my storytelling, which I tried to make it as positive as possible. And this story is positive. You'll get it, you'll understand it, and you'll love it. So stay tuned, and I will return in a moment. Thank you for returning to In the Real and to the Point. Uh, Today is January the 25th. 2022 okay and it is now four days before my birthday so I am so excited about what's going to happen in chap for chapter 55 in my life so I am going to inform you that um Devin's destiny you should really 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 get um listen to that program, um, so you'll get an understanding of these new topics. I mean, because we're promoting positivity. So, um, selfless center, acting selflessly for an unselfish cause, unselfishly sacrificing their self and their soul, no matter what the cost is. Or the expense for the expense of everything, relying on their faith, having faith in their God, connecting with kindred spirits through prayer, believing in the impossible, and expecting a miracle when there seems to be no option at all. Do any of us actually know what a selfless, unselfish? center is. Think about it. Stay tuned. We'll be back with you. So I'm going to catch you up with Devin's Destiny. Devin's Destiny is a kid's book about a child being born premature at birth at five months um, into his existence. Fighting all the odds He made it. He survived. All the challenges that life faced threw upon him, he fought back with exuberance, with tenacity, just the idea of the hope believing that he could be anything he wanted to be, no matter how many bad people or how many bad demons come for him. He would win, and when he would pull his friends in to his happiness as well. So stay tuned and we're going to get back to the story. Thank you for returning. Um, If I was a song writer, this would be my masterpiece. I think so. Okay. Um, All the things that I didn't say. I write them in this poem. The twists and the turns and the rhymes and no reason. Forever is a season. A maze of labyrinth that always leads to home. All the things that I couldn't say, I'll sing them in this song. I'll sing them so softly, every verse, every hook, every note, every melody, no offset, no repeat, no rewind, no reverse, not one unwavering line. I'm so sorry. I know you can take it. 
you are stronger than you think. Believe me when I tell you, I'll leave you, never leave you alone. Forever is in our song. When you, when I can't take one moment of, leave, of believing that you'll live even one day feeling hopeless, afraid, and alone. Let my faith be your strength, the weight of every point. I love you. I love you. I love you so much. I'll be the angel singing to you, guiding you through the storm. Time had an expiration date and expectation we took for granted. Every second, I enjoyed every line. I'm so sorry I couldn't stay. I had to leave you behind. For all the things that I didn't say forever came too soon. I'll write them in this poem. Every word is my love song to you. All the things I couldn't say, I'll sing them in this song. A soft, sweet melody. I love you. I love you. I'll guide you through the storm because I love you. I'll love you always through the storm. Let my faith be the wind and the song that guides you home. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. We have more coming. So thank you for returning. And I wanted to also take the time out and I want to reach out to a few people. I want to understand how one of the richest oil families in Texas, not sure if it's White House or Midland, Houston, Austin, somewhere where there are big oil families maybe even in Smith County. I'm not sure, but what I want to know is why are you rich folk all the way down in Florida harassing a caretaker, someone who cared for elderly people and did everything helping them all the way no family members came forward, but they're here, here harassing this gentleman because they have money. You don't have enough money that you have to come to Florida and try to take advantage of a person that cared for one of your family members that you have not seen for more than five years. Even when she let you know, called you to let you know that she was in ill health, you did not come to her side. This young man cared for her until her last dying breath. But because you're rich, you want to come here to Florida and harass someone with so much integrity and so much hard, even through his trials and tri um, tribulation, his hard way to life. Yes, Devin's destiny. Devin, someone who fought every breath to stay in this world, his purpose was not clear to anyone until at this point. Even with everything going on in his life, he made a way to care for some great people. The same people that inspired me to write this book. 180 Days of Sunshine. So stay tuned for the storytelling of 180 Days of Sunshine. 
and you rich old folk in Texas. I got your last name. I'm still researching to do this article. I will be sending it out to several newspapers because I have a viable source that will give documentation, interview to whomever is seeking to stop the rich from harassing the poor. Poor folk who do great things, not for the profit of monetary things, but for the profit of humanity. Sacrificing and giving the one thing that we need in this world, a bright and shining star. Someone who will stand up and do what so many others fail to do. You have money. You have everything you need. Why harass someone that has done a great deed? Nobody's taken from you. Nobody's stealing from you. You should be ashamed, Mr. Roberto, you know who I'm talking to, Roberto. You know who I'm talking to. You should be ashamed because before everything aspired to where it has come, you made a promise to a person on their dying bed. You should be ashamed. All of you should be ashamed. Ashamed. All of you are wealthy. None of you came forth to take care of what was sacred to you. But now everything that's monetary, you feel you deserve. No, what you deserve is to sit down and pray. Because you all should be ashamed. Stop it. Stop it. Stop picking on the poor. Stop picking on the people that built this America. Stop it. You should be ashamed. There are some things in life that there is no recourse from. The consequences of one's actions. The situation has to play out. And sometimes there can be no closure. You cannot find closure once life cease to exist. You can't find closure in death's finality. I learned that. I watched the anger that feeds the guilt that could not quench a fire that had grown out of control. These characters in 180 Days of Sunshine, it's about three people unexpectedly coming together. One putting the two older ladies together and they find a friendship that will last throughout eternity. While the one young lady goes out on this adventure um, completing a bucket list, she ends up finding out that there's a whole lot of health issues that she has to face. And the older later lady decides to join her on her, her adventure um, on, these, on this trip out to the Midwest. Um, the young lady ends up having to go into the hospital. And while they were there waiting for her recovery, the older lady started reaching out to her children. And from the devastation 
of the rejection, um, her health started to fail her. Her stress level, everything started to accumulate and things started to change. And so their bucket list was cut short. But in that 180 days, these ladies found a perfect lifetime of friendship. And uh, you will get to enjoy every step they made, the restaurants, the clothing stores, everything that we take for granted as normal people, uh, they found solace in. Just going, finding a mom and pop donut shop and making a big deal of it was absolutely intriguing. They pull you in. This story grabs you and it forces you to find your best friend. If not, to take a stranger and let that stranger become your BFF. So as soon as this book hits the market, I will let you know and stay tuned because I have more storytelling. Thank you. Thank you for returning to In the Real and to the Point. I'm your host, Sharon LeVette. Today is January the 25th, 2022, Tuesday evening. And I am going to continue on with my storytelling because... When we left off, I was telling you about my brother and um, the Christmas picture um, where I have it right here, okay? This is the Christmas picture that this lovely lady here, Rosa, hey mother, um where she tried all day and wasted a entire pack, I would say, of film trying to get that perfect shot. And um, then my brother, that Easter, um, we were trying to hang out or we were hanging out and he was trying to cheer me up and then he painted me like the Wicked, Wicked Witch of the West. So then I ended up on my friend... Cherie Polop, who inspired me to start with my arts and craft, as did my mom, because she would make dresses that she put on her Dawn, her dish detergent bottles. And it was always Dawn. She never changed up on things like that. But anyway, so I was speaking about Cherie and it was the first time that I met her sister, Sharon Pollock. And I thought that it was amazing because I was young and naive and out of touch with life. So I thought Sharon, like, they were city girls. I thought it was amazing to meet a, a, a city person, right? So you see all this stuff on TG. TV, so you thinking you're gonna see this here little spicy, which she was spicy, but you're gonna see you thinking you're gonna see something more on the lines of what's on television, but I didn't see that. I saw this verbal, outspoken, strong woman that made me gain a type of I guess, I don't, I'm not sure what I would call it, but she made, I felt confident. That's the word I'm looking for. I, I found confidence. And um, her um, baby sister, Kim, we played basketball, and her and I was like two bumblebees on a, on a basketball court because we were little and thin, but we buzzed around that floor like wild animals, let me tell you. We played, I don't know, can't remember if it was Lake Butler or P.K. Young, but we rode that girl. I'm telling you, we got called for every 
fall in the book. We were on those girls' back, riding them like horses. Let me tell you, we were doing it. We won that game, but it was not for lack of beating up a couple of people. <laughs> and uh, that was the first time I got a pass the, the, for a um, two-point, uh, um, a layup. I got so excited when they threw me the ball. I ran half court, I tell you, and I probably um, dribbled the ball when I got to the um, free point line. And I threw that ball up in the air, and it didn't make it. And it was so funny to me that I was consumed with energy, and I lost my mind, let me tell you. I was not. You can put me around to chase people all day. But when I get excited, that brain go to freeze dry. So then we, um, I just love storytelling about my school days and just about life in general because everything has a point and a purpose. And um, we don't know what we are put on this earth for. But as I was talking about the selfless sinner, that is the person, the parent, that knows what the consequences are, but will do whatever they can do to take care of their own. So be inspired, stay encouraged, and I will do a reading from one of my previous books. It's just, I'm trying to get all these things together. A lot has happened. And I thank you so much for joining me on In the Real and to the Point. Enjoy your day. Stay tuned. I have more coming. I'll have three more coming before the end of the month. Talk to you later. So while I'm on this day of remembering... This is also the day um, I'm remembering um, before my um, brother passed um, two years ago. We were 11 months and 10 days apart. We would be fraternal twins, if you ask me. He was my best friend. I mean, we grew apart, but we were brother and we were sister. He loved me and I loved him. So, enough said on that, but this is my brother, and I remember this Christmas as clear as day, and um, it took my mom, oh gosh, I have to say maybe the whole pack before she got this one picture, <laughs> and uh, but the Easter before, my brother, I was sad. I was very sad. Um, something traumatic had happened. And um, he tried to fight his way through it to help me through it. Um, he went and he jumped on the person that harmed me. But that was the Easter where I wanted, I was trying on makeup. And he was like, okay, I'll do you. And then you can do me. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay. So that day, he got all of my mom green <laughs> eyeshadow. And I looked like the Wicked Witch of the West. I mean, I was green and black my entire face. <laughs> and I cried because I wanted him to make me look pretty. <laughs> and he made me look like the Wicked Witch of the West. And um, oh, it's so many tales. Oh, so many tales. I love and I miss my brother so much. And um, it's just a day of remembrance. And I want to remember the good things and um, not focus on, so much on the negative. Um, life change life changes we grow we live we learn we endure we find strength we discover strength 
we accept our placement in life. And if we don't, we fight every day through life not accepting life's reality. Life's going to happen. You can't dwell on it. I'm And I'm sitting here and I'm not made up. I'm in the natural I'm at. I'm having me a campfire. I smoke me a yellow jack. I barbecued me some ribs. Well, smoke ribs, should I say. Um, there's nothing to complain over. I mean, my greatest adventure is trying to make it to 55. And if I make it to 55, this is my invitation to 10 people, okay, 10 people. We're going to get together and we're going to celebrate life. I don't have 10 friends, but I'm extending this to hang out with 10 people on my birthday, January 29th, 2022. I will be 55. It will be a glorious event. I'll have exceeded life of my since my brother's passing, who passed at 53. And I'm on the eve of my mom's passing of when she passed at 56. So I don't know how long life lasts, but all I know is life is for living. It's not for anything else. You got to live life in order to love life. And even though there's some rocks and, and pebbles and all of that that get in your way, maneuver around it. You can do it. Be strong. There's people in your life that has influenced you and let you know every day of the person you are capable of being. Go out and be that person. I've been labeled so many things, and so many people have gotten it wrong. I don't complain about it. I don't even question them about it. They know me. They know me better than I know myself. Who can argue with that? Thank you for joining in the real and to the point. I am your host, Sharon Levette, the surgeon.